I think I saw a spidey. Well, guess what? I don't see it now. Well, hello, welcome to my backyard again. Down on the ground there was where the pumpkin patch used to be. The pumpkins have been picked. Don't say that too fast, and I think there's something spiderific going on down there. Warning. The warning on this video has been removed, and this video is highly educational. Today is the 23rd of July for me in Australia. It's the middle of our winter, and I'm starting to also see some redback spiderific action going on. This pumpkin patch area becomes a recluse safe haven for all sorts of things. If I was a spider, I'd be hanging out in here waiting for the warmer weather to hit. And I dare say that's what's going on in my backyard season after season. It's more noticeable in the morning because dew falls on it, but what I often find in here is lots and lots of juvenile spider webs. My biggest fear is it will become a haven for where redback spiderlings can basically set up and hang out for the next spider season to hit. I think I'm going to have to hit this area with a little bit of heat. I can see a little critter there, it's in the middle of the screen, on the leaf. It's not a spider, but I'm trying to find a spider for you. Okay, you're going to have to look super, super carefully here because it's tiny and the wind's blowing. But where my tweezers is going, is a spider right there. I don't know whether it's in focus or not. I hope it is. Uh, there, it's on the end of the tweezers right now. Yes, I think there are many things like that in here. There's another spider there. I hope I've got it in focus. The wind's blowing a bit. The more you look, the more you see. In fact, there's another one there, it's on its web. It's just one of these environments, the more you look here, the more you're going to see this spider web everywhere, there's little spiders crawling everywhere. Maybe I can help you by getting my hand in there, and you'll see a spider running for its life. It's in my hand. Okay, it's taken off. So you got a feel for what's going on down here. Probably got some good spiders, but we've probably got ones we want to get rid of. Well, I'm going to use my little control method. Unfortunately, it's non-selective, but hey, it's my backyard. I'll give the area a good wet down before we get started. This is the cool shower before the heat wave. There'll be a system to this, the wind will be behind me. I'm going to get down nice and close to the vine here and basically put in sweeps like this. And that is going to take out anything I don't want to be round for next summer. Nothing is going to survive that. Absolutely nothing. Good thing about this is that heat gets right into the vine. Just working backwards here. I've got a fair bit to do. It's going to take a little bit of time. Big clumps of foliage like that, no problem. The flame gets right in. I think I can see some spider web on the pot there. I can sort that out real fast dusted. Another useful tool is a weed dragon and all this it can get some heat into the weedy area there. We're not doing the weeds we're sort of after them spideys and uh, that'll be enough heat to take out anything I dare say and get right in there and the best thing about this is it's chemical free. Yay! Environmentally friendly. Yay! It's about being a little bit methodical and remembering where you've been mind you it's basically scorched earth where this has been. Okay, that job's done and the summer heat has come a little bit early for whoever was living down there. Okay, very important document. This is my spider control document. It explains the spider season in Australia. Where we're at at the moment is basically last week of July. And I'd almost say this is the beginning of the spider season because last year we had a spider inside Mrs. Cow at the beginning of August. Now this brings back memories because last year we had quite an early spider season. I actually brought the Halloween burn forward to September. I might have to do the same this year. And I think the other important period is around end of October, Halloween. Once Halloween hits, man, we are into a full-blown spider season. I keep saying I'm going to remake that document. Notice we haven't gotten there yet. That magnet helped me because it's a bit windy today. And I finally got around to making my spider capture devices. Mind you, I could double these up as being a drum kit. I'll just explain the madness to the method behind this model first. 
These are just cheap galvanized metal pots in the gardening section at Kmart. They come in sets of three and they all slide inside each other. I didn't use the bigger one. This is the smallest one. I'll just drag this forward here and it's on top of what is a pot stand. Once again, this is just a cheapy thing from Kmart. I put some magnets there. Okay, I put three magnets on it. I also put some cable ties across it because the redback spiders like to make their webs uh, with a bit of a gap to the ground. I like to make their webs on a network of something. If there was nothing there, I don't think the spider would be enticed. That's my theory. And just with those magnets, look at this, it just goes on like that. So I can come along, I can inspect if I've got a spider and I painted it white inside there to help me see the spider. I know they don't mind it being white because, well, the red back was up inside Mrs. Cow when she was alive. So I've got two of those. I should probably go and make more. Uh, just buy another set of, oh, there you go. There goes my magnet system. I've got a bigger one here as well. It's got a bit of a different pot stand. Once again, I've used magnets to hold that on. It's painted white inside. And what I liked about this one is we've got these rings here and the spider will love to make its webs uh, going from these rings, going down to the ground. And they do all those drop down lines that red backs like to do. I think this is gonna be a winner. Very cheap, simple, anybody could make those if you want to catch redback spiders. And also, for the fact that double up as a drum kit, makes it even better. I've also got a more elaborate model, and this is the one that I made first. And I thought, well, it's a bit expensive. You buy one of these charcoal starters. Let me get rid of the thing that makes cakes first. Uh, this is a charcoal starter. I've painted it white inside. You buy these, well, in Australia I've seen them at Aldi, and don't buy them at Bunnings, they're a bit expensive there. Oops, not so expensive. Okay, I don't know if you know those, you put charcoal in there, and it starts charcoal for basically barbecues. It's a bit of a bygone era thing. And I've got this here, so this is like the lid that we can take off and inspect to see when there's spiders in here. And that goes on here, and there's a bit of a cutout there, so it's a nice firm thing there and it won't sort of blow off and the way to set these up is sort of illustrated over there mrs chicken is going to help me out here i've got a spike in the ground just excuse me mrs chicken uh star picket waratah steak i don't know which country you come from we call these different things nice short one cable ties there on that handle this sets up this spider catcher at whatever height you want i think that's a good height basically like fist okay fist size up I think you could go lower and you could go a little bit higher, but just if you remember that, okay. And then, of course, here, once again, I've got this here that I can take off and I can inspect to see if there was a spider getting about. Yeah, that was my first idea, and they don't make that good a drum either. The reason why I like these and it gave me ideas first was really what was going on inside. I'm fairly lazy, I don't like doing things. And it had that nice matrix of metal in there and that's what the spider really needs. I think this is the most important aspect because they need something to work their drop down lines off and uh, if without that, I don't think they're going to be that happy. It also gives them a bit of protection when they're living up the top here. Yes, uh, if you're a lazy person, that's probably the thing you want to go for. If you've got a bit of a cheap bend to you, well, I think that's the sort of method that you'd really enjoy. And the other secret to these would be to put these in the right spots where spiders like to reside. And I know the sort of conditions they like. Well, <laughs> they like what mummy does as a garden, okay? So I've got one of these things here, and if I was gonna put it in this area here, I'll tell you where I'd put it. I can actually see the little web going across here already. Oh man, it's gonna be spider thief and thune. I'd put it somewhere like this. Okay, it's going to get nice and warm there, and I put mummy's plants in around here, and the little spider's not going to know any different. So the method to the madness is you've got to think like a redback spider, you've got to make it very inviting. Mind you, the redback spider would probably see this area here under the lip of this tub as being very inviting, but it may see this as being like a grand palace for living. What do you think of my chances of getting a red back in there? I think it's pretty high. I noticed mummy's got more pots in the garden. I said less pots and we get more. Why does it happen like that for me now? What's disturbing and why I've sort of made this video and done my general burn there is I have found an active red back spider up near the back step. Oh, this is a little bit disturbing, but not surprising. There is a metal structure here. It's getting into shade now. It actually gets quite warm during the day. There's a concrete pad there, critters and everything run along this concrete pad. I've seen lots of skinks here. 
the web is actually quite extensive. I've actually caught a glimpse of this spider at night. Because we're in winter, it's fairly reclused and it's very hard to see. And I'll hopefully show you some pictures there. Uh, you can see there's ants crawling through here. This is what the spider will be picking off. The web actually goes all the way out here. Excuse me for a moment. All the way through here. It's actually quite extensive and it's actually not a small spider. And it's living up inside here, but my crikey, Charlie's. It could be down the bottom here, it could be further up here. Oh, man, look at this here. Mummy's gloves, it could be inside mummy's gloves. Oh. We'll deal with those at the end of the video. Yes, often in winter time, the spiders don't come out in their webs at night. They are often very hard to see. I also can see some webby, webby stuff going on here. I don't like the look of that either. Okay, and what I'm going to do is basically clear this web away, and I've got a bit of a plan to see this spider. It's actually a large spider, but it looks like it needs a feed, because I have caught a glimpse of it. I'm just going to clear the web away. Oops, I forgot. I've actually got to mark out just roughly where this web area is. It's a bit like when I had the, those mystery spiders under my car. I like to know where the web area is. Just making sure the spider has to do maximal work to set up its little webby network again. I'm going to capture the spider setting up a new web network, I hope, by using one of these Arlo cameras. I've done this uh, when I had the red back under the flower pot thing. Uh, one of these cameras has failed on me. The charging port at the back has gone AWOL on one of my cameras. So I'm starting to find little things about what I thought was a fantastic little camera system. Uh, you can trust me to find faults in cameras. It's going to be a setup, something like that. It may not happen tonight. It might take a couple of nights for this to happen. The spiders tend to be very reclusive. When we're in winter time, there's no guarantees of their activity. On the morning walk, I walk past many a red back infested area. At the local gym, Jim Spider is preparing for the next spring slash summer. I'm starting to see the webs being set up there. The very small webs at the moment, but I'm sure they're gonna be big nests later in the season. I can't see much going on around the pizza shop spider or that bin. It's looking a little bit dry there, but if you look very carefully, I can see web there. So if there is web, there tends to be a spider. That could be quite horrific this year. It wasn't too bad last year. And drain spider, oh dear, oh dear, it's a bit sad there. Drain spider had a very tough last summer. There were lots of bad storms, lots of big rain, and I think drain spider may have gone to another planet or another dimension. I don't think drain spider at the moment is showing us the love that we had when drain spider was there. R.I.P. drain spider. Let's finish on a high here. How many times have I caught Mummy's glove down in spider zone? Is this the third or fourth time? Let me get it over on the vine here and I'll give it a bit of a clean up. One day Mummy will learn her lesson. If there were any spiders in there, they're dusted. I just hope Mummy doesn't realise there's another set of gloves missing. Now I wonder which part of this video is going to trigger the demonetization machine learning madness that is smashing creators on this site. Just about every upload I've done during 2019 was demonetized as soon as it was uploaded. Then I need to fight to get the video back to being monetized. That can sometimes take up to a week. I have got a video that will look into what that redback spider was doing at the back step of our house in the middle of winter. We had this bubble of warm weather, very mild weather in the middle of winter, and I think nature got confused and that redback spider was doing some very summery things on very, very cold nights. And because this video is many months late being uploaded to YouTube, the redback spider traps that I've made, and I've actually made quite a few of them, there's one other you haven't seen which is a smaller one and the cheapest, they do work. A redback spider was attracted to one, it sort of proves that they do wander around because this redback would have been a spider from last summer, and it is set up home in one of the traps that I showed earlier in the video. As we rolled into spring, we've had some very very hot weather, it's been like drought conditions, strange sort of dust in the air, and there has been total fire bans, so I have not been able to do that Halloween burn like I did last year to control the spiders. And sorry for some of the camera settings in this video. I'm still using the Canon XC10 video camera, 
which got a little bit wet. It stuck in one mode, which is P mode. I can't get the manual modes and the high shutter speeds going. Put it this way, the way to describe the camera now, it's like a $3,500 GoPro. You basically can't change any settings on it. It's stuck on one setting. Maybe you think it's done a fairly good job, but I'm not keen on camera gear, which gets a splash of water and becomes basically useless.